Okay, now, here, so not to stray away from it, because if we talk about the courage to do evangelism, we want, don't want to stray away from it. We want to keep talking about the courage to do evangelism. Now, this will be an outline here, because a uh, people's problem, because many people, Christians are afraid to do, do evangelism, they miss the chance to save many people. So they miss the chance. And God's nature, Jesus was courageous to witness to the truth even when he was rejected by many. Jesus also gives us courage to do evangelism. He gives us the anointing of courage that we can do evangelism many times. Why many Christians have no courage to evangelize? Because they just have not grown up to have courage. They, have, they think that evangelism is an option. So it's up to them whether they, uh, uh, they want to do it or not. And then they give, give excuse, excuses and say, well, this person may not believe. So it's no use to evangelize. And then how to have stronger courage to do evangelism? That we practice with one another, we practice evangelism uh, to the Christians and then to the friends we know, to the relative, and then we practice evangelism to the outsiders. And also, two by two is easier, or in a group. Some people playing guitar, singing, and then other people uh, evangelize to people who pass by. So a crowd together would give us more courage. The more we do it, the more we have courage and then challenge them to have strong courage to do evangelism. So we challenge people, can we start to have courage to do evangelism? Can we start to, uh, when we have the courage to do it, God is very happy with us. Okay, so we narrow down to one area of our topic when we preach. Another example of following a narrow theme is, uh, is, is beneficial to follow God's perfect plan. So it's beneficial. So we want to stick to this that is beneficial to follow God's perfect plan. And then so this is people's problem. Many Christians don't follow God's perfect plan for their lives and they face different problems. So many Christians don't follow God's perfect plan. They don't love God. They don't pray much. They don't obey God. They don't serve God much. And then when they don't follow the perfect plan and then they face different problems. When they don't pray much, they don't have much strength. They don't have much joy, so they have different problems, the people's problem. God's nature. God loves us and God can plan perfectly. He planned perfect plans for our life. God will bless those who follow His plan. God has a most wonderful plan in the whole world. Parents may plan something for the children, but it might not come true. But when God plans something, if we follow Him, we obey Him, the plan will come true for each person. For each person, there is a perfect plan. And whenever we follow the perfect plan, God will give us blessings. It's beneficial to us. And why many Christians don't believe that God has a perfect plan for their lives and that plan is most beneficial to them? Why don't they believe that? Because they think that, well, God's blessings are too far away. It might not come. So they think the blessings may not come. They don't believe that God really mean it. That really seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to us. And then D, how to seek and follow God's perfect plan. And uh, the way to do it is start to obeying God in the ways that we know. Pray more and read the Bible and trust in God and obey God. And then uh, and then when we obey Him and we want to help other Christians, welcome people, uh, we pray for people. And then when we do that, when we do that, we get used to helping people. We get used to serving God. And when we get used to it, we'll become better and better. And then God will guide us how to do better. And also God will guide us what is the next step? How can we, uh, what are some effective ways? For instance, it's because of the pandemic that we start to have this online training. So God guides us. God guides us to start this uh, uh, online training. And so God is speaking. God spoke to me to guide me into this. So this is seeking God's will that we obey God. And then challenge to seek and follow God's plan and see God starts to bless our life. 
So we challenge people, do you want to be blessed by God? Do you want to obey God? Do you want to follow His plan? When you obey, follow His plan, you will see that God's blessing come to you. And also we can say, well, there are such testimonies of people who have obeyed God and they are blessed by God. So do you want your life to be like that? Okay, and then when we prepare our sermon and when we preach, we want to pray and let God's wonderful nature fill our spirit and guide us when we preach. So when we preach, we don't just want to speak with the mouth, but we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that God give us the compassion for the people. So when we speak, we'll say, you know, in our heart, we'll, we'll say, God loves me so much and God loves all these people and I want to speak God's truth so that I can bless the people. So let the Holy Spirit and His wonderful nature fill our hearts so that we are full of joy and peace and freedom when we share the message of God. When we are preaching about compassion, we pray and let God's compassion fill our heart, our spirit. So when we preach about compassion, we want to pray to God that we'll be filled with this compassion and then we'll care about people. We want to uh, help people to have compassion. When we are preaching about forgiveness, we pray and let the appreciation of God's forgiveness and the willingness to forgive fill our spirit. So when we preach about forgiveness, we want to think about how God has forgiven us even though we have sinned so many times. Thank you, Lord. You have forgiven me so many times. I thank you. And then feel with the willingness to forgive other people and think of the people who have offended us. I want to forgive them. I want to be nice to them. I want to be kind to them. When we are preaching about how God accepts us, we pray and let God's acceptance fill our spirit and we ask God to give us strong acceptance of our members. So when we preach about uh, acceptance, God's acceptance, then we want to believe that God is accepting me now. God is very happy with me now. God is happy with all you brothers and sisters here and right now when you're listening and learning. God is happy with you. God accepts you. So when we preach, we say, God is accepting what we do. God is very happy that I'm teaching now. God is very happy that you are all learning and listening now. God is happy when we are serving God. So, so we are filled with this acceptance, spirit of acceptance. Oh Lord, you accept me and I, everything I do for you, you're so happy. Thank you, Lord. Everything I do for you, you're so very happy. And when we are preaching about freedom in Christ, we pray and let God's freedom fill our spirit. Then we first live out our teaching before we preach. So when we want, want to talk about freedom, then we say, Lord, I am free in you because you take care of me. I can have freedom. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm free in you. Okay, so freedom, if we preach about freedom, wherever the Holy Spirit is, there is freedom. Then we want to talk about people's problem. Many Christians are not free. They, they think there are a lot of responsibilities that they're not doing well. They were, they're not doing well enough. So God might not be happy with them. So they think about their failure and then accusation. So they have a lot of pressure. So that's people's problem. And God's nature, God's nature is He, he, he is a free God. He's very happy in heaven. The angels and the people in heaven are all very free, very joyful, and very free. And He wants to give freedom to people. He wants to let people be free because when we serve God under pressure, we have less strength, we have less uh, motivation. And when we serve God with less freedom, actually people will say, you are under pressure. We don't want to, we don't want to follow a pastor who is under pressure. So that's God's nature. He's a God of freedom. And then why people cannot have freedom? Because in this world, people don't have freedom. Many people, they just, they're under pressure. They live under pressure. And then how can we have freedom? We read the Bible and believe that God is in control of everything. Everything is in, in His hand. He's in charge of everything. When I love Him and obey Him, He'll take care of everything for me. So I don't have to carry the burden of 
the results of my ministry, the results of my life. I don't have to worry about the future. God will take care of the future. God will take care of the finance. So I just relax in God. I can be serving joyfully. And then the more joyful we are, then the more fruitful we'll be. When we serve God with freedom, we'll have uh, fruits of the Holy Spirit and fruits of ministry. And we'll enjoy it much more. So challenge to people is, do you want to live a free life, a life without burden? Okay, and then eight. So these are about preaching. How should we preach? Uh, with the method of uh, God's nature preaching method and Bible study. We pray and let God's nature fill our spirit and God's nature will show through our voice and our body movement. So when we have this freedom, it shows through the way we talk, our voice and our, our, our facial expression. Everything will show freedom. So when we are filled with this freedom and then people can see our freedom. And then our voice should be following one pattern, should not be following one pattern. Now, some people, they will be preaching the same way all through the sermon. Now, just now you notice how I said, some people will be preaching the same way all through the sermon. Now, you notice I change the way I talk when I talk, uh, when I talk about different things. So some people, you know, keep the same way of preaching throughout the sermon. So that I will emphasize certain words and say it slower or heavier or lighter. So the change, the use of voice is very important. It's something we need to learn. Now, it's not just for pastors. It's for anyone who do evangelism, who, who is leading a cell group. We need to learn to, um, to change uh, our voice, our tone of voice, the way we talk, the speed, everything, okay? Uh, now, some people preach the same way, and some people could be shouting, some people could be uh, a, uh, just speaking in a very low voice all through the sermon. Now, people will get used to the shouting, and they won't pay attention. You notice I would uh, say this word uh, uh, slower. They won't pay attention. So that's how we change the speed, the speed of talking. So I'll slow down the word speed. We should match our loudness, tone of voice, and speed of speech with our content. So if it's something exciting, then we, have, then we speak loudly. And then when we talk about God's love, God loves us very much. He's very a loving God. He cares about us. He wants to bless us. Then then it will be softer. But it's not just all the way the same. You notice how I say, God is a loving God. You notice that it's different. Each word is different. God is a loving God. You notice how I say loving? I put some energy there. God is a loving God. God is a caring God. I emphasize the word. Uh, tone of voice is, for instance, a gentle tone or a... Uh, a tense tone or a tone with energy. Hallelujah! That says energy. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! And then free, a, a tone of freedom. Oh, thank you, Jesus! Hallelujah! It's a tone of freedom. And also the speed is individual words and phrases. Now in English, when we speak English, we have to put phrases together. For instance, God loves us very much. God loves us very much. He, take, he takes care of us. We don't say, He takes care of us. He takes care of us. He, he knows our feelings. He cares about our feelings. So each of these is uh, you know, is a separate here is a separate clause. Now sometimes in a longer sentence, for instance, um, when I first became a Christian, I, didn't, I already experienced the Holy Spirit. I already experienced the Holy Spirit. But I didn't know that it was the 
you know, it was a stronger presence of God at that time. I didn't know that. It was a stronger presence of the Holy Spirit. So I emphasized certain words and then I put the phrases together. I didn't realize that it was a stronger presence of the Holy Spirit. So now in your language, you might, you know, whatever way it is, so you want to put words together, a, a, uh, a, uh, a phrase together. You want to put a phrase together that people can understand easier. We want to put phrases together that people can understand easier. We don't just say words individually. And also we don't just space each word the same. We don't want to say, God loves you very much. God loves you very much. No, don't say it all the way through with the same speed or tone. But we can say, God loves you very much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is wonderful. You notice how I emphasize certain words. God is wonderful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and then sometimes pausing or slowing down a speech will draw attention of the people. For instance, we can say, well, let's think about it. God is right here now. He's right here caring for us right now. He's working in our life right now. So I slow down to draw people's attention and uh, use an example like, um, God is so wonderful. He cares about us all the time. So the two sentences, the speed are different. And when we slow down or pause, sometimes we pause. How do we pause? Um, God is full of love. His love is so great. When His love touches us, now you can pause a little bit here, when He touches us with His love, we'll be comforted. We experience His care. His presence is very wonderful. So we can have short pauses there. It will draw attention of people. Sometimes we put strength, firmness, gentleness in a certain words to emphasize those words. So we can put strength in some word and firmness, firmness. Oh, Lord Jesus is wonderful. Firmness or gentleness. God is full of love. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So that's the word of gentleness. So this is something we want to develop, something we practice. We practice this so that we can change the loudness, the tone of voice. Tone of voice means like uh, some words are stronger, some uh, 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 gentler, like, oh, thank you, Jesus. That's a different tone of voice. And then sometimes it's a, a firm tone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is wonderful. And the speed and the pausing the strength, the firmness, and the gentleness. So we want to change this during our uh, message. And when we talk to also, we can also learn to develop resonance in our voice. Now resonance is something, it takes a lot of time to practice, to learn. Resonance is important for speaking and singing. When we practice resonance, we yawn and we'll raise our soft palate, the soft part of the back of the roof of our mouth, okay? Now I'm to trying to demonstrate this, it might be hard for you to see. When I open my mouth, you notice that, um, I, I, I don't know the name of it, um, but you can see that the back part of my mouth originally is, uh, of the roof of my mouth inside, is lower down, but I raise it up, okay? I demonstrate here. I, I know it's hard for you to see. It's raising it up. Now there's no light here. I, I can show you when we come back uh, after the break later. Um, but the way to do it is by, it's like yawning. Oh, oh, oh. And yawning will raise up 
the roof of our mouth. Now you can try it now. Oh, 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 ba. Now when you raise up the roof of your mouth and then you have strength from your diaphragm, ba. From your down below the belly, the strength from down from below. Ma. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So the strength come from below. And then we open up our mouth and open up the roof, the soft palate, because the back part is soft and it can be raised up. So you can uh, look at each other's mouth and try to raise up. It takes time to do that. Now after the break, I'll bring a flashlight and I'll demonstrate to you how to do it. And then like when we have a full yawn, it will raise our soft palate and it will create more space for resonance. It's very important to have space for resonance and the throat should be relaxed. The strength of the voice comes from tr contracting the lower belly, not from the throat. So we can practice like this. Now you notice my voice. If I don't open up all the way, now notice it opening up. Now I demonstrate again from not opening up to opening up. And there's string from below. So you can practice this. So it takes time to practice that. So you can uh, use a, a piano on your cell phone. You can download a piano or a tone. And then you change from, you know, go from lower tone, uh, lower key to higher key. So you go from low to high, and then you open up, and then when you talk, hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, the strength from below, hallelujah, hallelujah. The strength is not from here. If the strength is from here, it will sound like this. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's strength from the throat. We want to relax the throat. When we sing or talk, we put our hand on the throat and you feel that it's all relaxed here. Then your voice will be relaxed. So when we sing, Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. The voice is relaxed and soft and yet has strength. So it can be gentle and have strength at the same time. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. I worship you. It can be soft and yet it has strength. So singing is not just shouting and speaking is not just shouting. It's something we need to practice. I have learned singing from a few teachers and only one of them has taught me how to use the resonance. Now the resonance for singing has a few ranges. First the lower range is from down below the chest and it's still opening up the throat. More. When you open up, and then it can cause resonance in the chest. And then in the mid tone, it will be around here. More. It will be the sound will be around the face. More. And then the higher tone will be up above our head. It will be up above the head. So we practice. More. From, from the lower tone first. So from the lower tone to the higher tone. Okay, the higher tone will be up, up there. The resonance will be up. 
that's up there and then oh, that's the mid tone that's around the face okay and then you practice this more and then use strength from your lower belly and then your voice would have strength and when you have strength from the voice then you uh, you can change the way of expression like you notice how when I talk I change the way of expression now notice how I say this Bible verse for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life so I change my uh, the way I of uh, the my voice and then uh, hallelujah hallelujah oh hallelujah so I change the tone of voice when I have the resonance now you can send me recording of your voice and I can let you know whether you are you your resonance uh, the location of your resonance now you can hear from people when they sing now untrained singer very often they sing like this hallelujah hallelujah then the uh, the resonance is very uh, dispersed it's no concentrated resonance we want to have concentrated resonance Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Jesus! Hallelujah! So there is a concentrated voice, and and uh, is is uh, focus. Now focus is like this: focus voice. Oh, Hallelujah! Focus voice, but not focus is like this: Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That's it's. It's not focused. So when we sing also, thank you, Jesus. That thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then not focused will be like this. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we want to uh, pay attention to the quality of our voice so that we can sing better for God's glory. Also, when we preach, when we talk, we can have different expression. Now, we're not in a real room. When I, I came and then in a real room and you hear me talk and then you can hear the resonance. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. You're so wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. I love you. I adore you. So always change. Our tone of voice, our, the strength of the voice, continually in a sentence. We change the tone of our voice, the strength of our voice continually. Notice how I say continually in our speech. So we don't just keep one way of talking all the way. We change every sentence is different. So God bless you and we'll have a 10 minutes break and then you can practice this. You can practice this, practice your voice and if someone there knows how to use the resonance, uh, the head voice can demonstrate that. Demonstrate how to use the head voice. Uh, for talking and singing and uh, and then the other people can learn. So first you start with Johnny. Oh, yeah, ba. Oh. And then also you want to practice holding your breath, your breath, holding your breath. The way to do it is like this: expand your chest sideways, not upward, sideways. Expand your chest sideways. But now uh, it's hard for you to see. Expand your chest sideways, and then hold your breath. And then hold a voice for as long as you can. So hold your voice as long as you can. And then you can also practice doing this.
So practice holding it for a long time. And then when we sing and talk, uh, make the voice continuous. For instance, you don't sing like this. Hallelujah. Don't sing like this, but it's continuous. Hallelujah. 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 God is so good. The voice is continuous. When we're talking to you, we don't talk like this. For God so loved the world. But we make the voice continuous. For God so loved the world. It's continuous sound. What happened is there is breath coming up. So there's continuous breath coming out. And so you have to hold your breath so that you have strength in the breath and hold it for as long as you can. So practice that every day and your singing will improve uh, immediately. And also your, your sermon, your preaching can be improved also. Okay.